In this video, I'm building a giant indoor pond for my Japanese koi fish. This is gonna be the biggest, most expensive project I've ever done. If you watch my channel, you've probably met my koi that I handpicked in Japan with my mom. Last summer, I began building them an indoor oasis to escape the bitter cold Chicago winter. I sent my parents off to Florida, and when they got back, Oh, what the God! The only problem is, we never fully finished the pond. This doesn't look like the indoor paradise my fish dreamed of. Yes, fish have dreams too. We called Ed the Pond Professor and his team over at Aquascape Inc. to help us complete this project. They've built ponds for people like Coyote Peterson, Shaquille O'Neal, and today, they're gonna help me bring my vision for this habitat to life. His team only has three days though to help us out, so we have to move fast. I've been trying to figure out exactly what I want my pond to look like for a few months now, and it's really hard for me to decide because I want it to be perfect. First time I've made a mood board in my entire life. I guess I'm that guy. I'm gonna be trying to blend a contemporary and modern look with a jungle zen aquascape. I am a little bit nervous how it's gonna look and if like the vision I have in my head is gonna translate into the real thing. Now that we have our plan, we need to go to the store and grab our raw materials. I'm now at Floor and Decor, where I'm gonna be picking out some tile. I wanna find something that looks cool, modern, clean. A lot of options though, so it's which shade of gray do I like the most? I don't know. I found this gray slate, and if it covered the whole outside of the pond, it would look amazing. We got gray slate for the outside walls, white tile for the inside floor, and tons of artificial plants to decorate the back walls. So I'm here at Hobby Lobby picking out some fake plants. We're gonna be using artificial plants for this project just because of the sheer size and the amount of space that we need to fill. Plus it's in the basement and we're trying to make it as low maintenance as possible. Our artificial pieces of rock, wood, and vine also showed up. Oh, it's like fake rock and wood. That's the point. I can see how that is beneficial. I reached out to a company called Universal Rock about this project and they wanted to help out. So they hooked us up with this massive 15 foot wall of artificial rock. Why is it so dirty? I thought it was fake. This is the type of stuff that aquariums and zoos use for their exhibits. So it's gonna make our pond look super legit, like a real life rainforest. 60,000 likes and we can have the koi have a play date with a monkey. I was expecting the front door, but <laughs> this works too. Every time Ed and his team show up, it's a time crunch. I don't know why they keep deciding to sign up for it, but I can only assume it's because they are in love with my dog, Melly. To start, we need to drain the pond and move the fish outside for the summer. This is a 2,300 gallon pond and it's gonna take several hours to drain. Moving all this water out of the basement is gonna be a challenge. We're using a cleanup pump, snaking it through the window and up into the backyard. George has got an incredible technique. <laughs> Covering yourself with fish waste, it's all good. It's gonna be a long three days. The pond is about drained guys and the koi are officially away at Camp Outdoor Pond for the rest of the summer. Unfortunately, we still have loads of sand to shovel out because I got a little too excited when the pond was first built, but eight buckets up and out the window later and we're back with a blank canvas and officially ready to begin remodeling. To start, we're gonna build a wood structure around the perimeter of the pond with different elevations. This is gonna hold our massive sheet of artificial rock in place. We want this rock formation to kind of undulate a little bit. We don't want a flat rock panel because it's gonna look fake. Now that the structure's in place, it's time to bring in the rock. Right there, good, good, good. Trevor is screwing a big piece of artificial rock right into the wooden beam. It's way too big for the whole thing to fit, so we're gonna have to cut some of it down. How hard is this stuff to cut? <laughs> some spots are super easy, others where it gets thick and you have a lot of the texture, it just eats the blades up. Adding the rock already transforms this space immensely, but just wait until we add plants, you guys. People are gonna mistake my basement for the Amazon rainforest. Might have to call Heiko and see if there's any new species down here. There's no report of any fish from this area. We finished up Mount Aquascape, and that's a wrap for day one. Ed's face right here, Luis's face, Trevor's face, and if there's room, maybe we'll put Greg's face. <laughs> the founding fathers of ponds. We've got some crazy stuff planned for day two and the rest of this build that you won't want to miss. But before we continue, I want to thank today's video sponsor, Water Drop Filters. Having good water quality is literally the most important aspect of keeping in an aquarium. I know tap water seems like it's clean, but most tap water actually contains chlorine, bacteria, and other chemicals which can be harmful to your fish. It can also cause cause algae to grow out of control in your aquarium. The best way to protect your fish and avoid drinking these gross chemicals is to use an RO, which stands for Reverse Osmosis Water Filter. This is their 800 gallon per day RO system. I installed it underneath this sink in the bathroom and actually plumbed it so that it connects to a water storage vat on the other side of this wall. So I can literally get RO water out of the tap or if I need to do water changes for my planted aquarium, reef aquarium, or crayfish tank, 800 gallons per day is a lot of water, which is exactly what I need for all of the aquariums that I have down here. It also has a built-in UV sterilizer which kills 99% of bacteria and viruses in the water. This is an amazing feature that a lot of traditional RO systems don't have. And this is super nice because it makes your water crystal clear and it makes your fish look really good. My favorite feature is this thing. 
This is a LED indicator, which actually reads the TDS reading right here while it's working. This means like at literally a glance, you can monitor the water quality and you know when it's time to replace these filters. It comes with an RO faucet with a digital TDS meter on it as well. So literally from your sink, you can also monitor the quality of your drinking water. Super, super nice. This filter is definitely an investment and will save you a lot of time and money in the long run. And you can also get an exclusive $200 off discount if you use my special links down below where you can get your own water drop filter. Thank you to Water Drop Filters for sponsoring and helping make this video possible. The plan for day two is to complete the inside of the pond. For the floor, we're gonna be laying down a white tile and scaping the edges with real rock. It goes from the tile to these small pieces of gravel, then up to the bigger real rocks in order to create a smooth transition from the tile to the artificial rock wall. Guys, we have a big, big rock. I mean, I'm talking big. Ed did the math and we'll need to use about 15 tiles to cover the majority of the floor. Tile by tile, we're mounting them to the liner using insulation foam. That thing was explosive. Yeah. Just, okay. <laughs> the inner tile and rock work looks phenomenal, but we still have a full day ahead of us. Next, we'll be completing the outside of the pond by cutting and mounting the gray tiles to the plywood foundation. The tile we picked out for the outer part of the pond is super thick, so Ed has to use a special type of saw that uses water to make a smooth cut. Each tile requires its own unique calculation because they have to line up precisely precisely with the wood. This cut is crazy. Once mounted to the wood, we have to use a beam and a sandbag to secure the tile while it's drying. It's like the worst game of Tetris you've ever played. While Ed is working on that, we have Trevor starting to escape the inside of the pond with the plants. We're gonna get started on doing some of the plantings for the background of this pond. Plants it all up around it, disguise the walls with moss, this is an artificial piece of wood. It's crazy how real universal rock makes this stuff look. We have two big pieces of artificial wood that we're gonna be using on either side to transition to the formal wall. Got a little wobbling action. Then we're gonna be poking in some vines, rock, and other material. This process was super tedious and it ended up taking the rest of day two. That leaves us with a lot to get done for the third and final day of building. Today is the team's last day to work on this project. So by the end of the day, we need to have the outside of the pond finished and the rock wall scaped with plants. We are adding some caulk in between these top plates. So you can see like right here, there's a little gap. It's very satisfying to watch Trevor apply all of this. <laughs> While they're finishing up, there are a few last minute touches that need to happen in order to bring this pond to the next level. So Jim, the electrician is here. And to install lighting in, around, and above the pond. Out here, we've set up this big pool. And the reason we set it up is to fill this up so that when it comes time to fill the indoor pond, we already have all the water here. All we got to do is drain it from this pool down to the indoor pond and it'll just make filling up the pond a lot faster. The last time that we filled it took between like six and eight hours. This should knock off probably a couple hours at least. Also an amazing swimming pool for Melly, potentially. It, what? Did you just drink from the potted plants? Bro. Ed and his team have been here for nine hours already and we still aren't done. We have about four tiles left to go. There's a little hole here. This is basically where all the water is gonna be filtered into. Took a five gallon bucket, cut it to size and then foamed it in. And then we kind of decorated it with some plants, moss, whatnot. True fish cave, I guess. Without the fish actually <laughs> using it, hopefully. All right, so we got these big bags of carbon. We had an issue with the pond being a little bit cloudy before the remodeling. So taking that into account, we're gonna throw some carbon in there. Hopefully we don't get that cloudiness anymore. The final piece. Final piece. After three days of Ed and his team's hard work. The indoor pond is finally complete. The moment has come. <laughs> Contemporary clean look. Spot on with it. I think we nailed it. You guys nailed it. <laughs> this turned out so much better than you could imagine. It's exactly what I wanted. We got the gray slate on the outside. It gives it that cool modern feel. On the inside, we have this white tile. When we put our fish in here and eventually, hopefully some stingrays, I really think this is gonna make those animals pop. We have the real rock and gravel on the outer edges of the pond. So it's still somewhat of an ecosystem pond. There's a place for all that bacteria to culminate and grow. Trevor told me that this was like the biggest aquascape he's ever done. You absolutely nailed it, Trevor. Clapping emoji hands in the comments for him. He built a shelf, so it really feels like this whole overflow is a cave. These plants right here are actually going to float up once we add the water, so that's gonna add some cool dimension to this area. This and this are some hidden water jets to help create circulation up and throughout the pond. You can see it's hidden behind the rocks. And as a viewer of the pond, you wouldn't even see it. I love this plant. I don't know why. I think it's because it just adds a little bit of vegetation to the foreground. So it just gives the pond some dimension. For a fake plant, this thing is very pretty. Are you guys ready to see the remodeled indoor pond? Yes. Are you nervous? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Only God knows what is down there. Here we go. Showing the parents the pond. This is incredible. A little bit better than before. Completely different. To me, it looks like one investment into this 
Oh, it's beautiful. You put new lights up? They never noticed on the house. <laughs> new lights. <laughs> You're changing the house. I feel like, an addition. Yeah, the lights are an improvement. That's an improvement only that they go with a pan. They're pretty nice and bright. They're nice. Melly's like, where are the fish? Wonder what she is thinking right now. I mean, since we have a pond in the basement, at least it looks nice now. It's more presentable. Before it was just a skeletal part. So for now, it looks much better. Good job, George. You damaged my house, basically. I mean, I don't think we need to think about that, though, right now. Okay. All right. It's time to fill the pond back up and put the koi back in. This pond is gonna take hours to fill up, so I hope you don't mind coming on a quick trip with me to one of my favorite fish stores to get some more supplies. I'm back with Nick and Chris. They call us the Blue Man Group. No, <laughs> they call you guys the Gingerbread Twins. Good to see you guys. It's been a minute. Per usual, like when I normally come in here, I need stuff. What do you need? Koi food, filter floss, bacteria for the pond, crayfish food, and some fish food for my clownfish, because I'm running out of that. Look at my new uh, indoor pond. That's in your basement? Yeah. It actually looks pretty good. Oh, geez. If I were your parents, I would have killed you by now. <laughs> better than the plywood. Yeah, it is a lot better than the plywood. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at my parents' house, the pond is just about at the halfway mark. Watching the rest of this pond fill up is super satisfying, and the water coming in is crystal clear. I'm excited to get my fish back in here, but really quickly, if you're enjoying this video so far, take a moment to hit the subscribe button. It's totally free and you'll get to see when I add even more exotic fish to this pond. Once the pond was filled with water, I added a ton of bacteria and waited a week so that the pond could quickly cycle before we put the fish in. Over the course of that week, I actually ordered a few more miscellaneous supplies. First, I ordered an official Japanese koi net. This is a special type of net that holds water that you can use to transfer koi. I figured it's about time that I actually get one of these for myself. I also finally had a second to do some cable management. We had tons of wires just kind of going all over the place, so we were able to consolidate those. I added some more bacteria to the pond and added a little net covering the intake so that no koi fish can accidentally get swept into the filter box. All right, so the fish are inside. Let's just, I just wanna take a second to enjoy how beautiful these koi fish look in the finished indoor pond. This is insane. The koi definitely look a lot happier, like noticeably happier than they were before. I mean, they're like just exploring and they just love it. Our koi pond is officially complete. And it's beautiful. From Japan to Illinois. All right, so the final part of this video is gonna be me breaking down exactly how much every part of this build costs. I'm really just doing this to show you guys what it would take if you wanted to build something like this for yourselves, as well as to give you guys some transparency at the scale of this project and sort of just like what really went into it. Let's start with phase one of this pond. The glass panels that you see here, there's one and then two on the other side. Each one cost $800 for a total of $1,600. The carpenter that built the wood structure of this pond cost $700. The actual material cost itself of just the structural part of the pond, so that would be the wood, the steel, and other supplies was $3,400. Now I gotta give a huge shout out to Aquascape Inc because they chipped in a whole bunch of pond supplies such as the lights, the pumps, the liner, the skimmer box, net, bacteria, rock, gravel, and carbon. So massive thank you to Aquascape Inc. Plus Ed and his team generously gave their time towards this project, which I didn't have to pay for. So thank you to Team Aquascape. Couldn't have done this without you. You guys rock. So the total for the first phase of the pond build was $5,700. All right, phase two, which is pretty much everything that you saw in this video. So the rock wall. Universal Rock generously gave us that for free, but I did have to pay for the shipping, which was $420. Yes, it cost $420 just to have that thing freighted to my driveway on all of the tile and the slate for the inside and outside of the pond, spent $745. At the Home Depot for more miscellaneous supplies, I spent $510. Now here's a huge one at Hobby Lobby on all of the plants that you see here, I spent $2,820, almost $3,000 just on the plants. I spent $300 on the lights above the pond, and then I spent another $1,000 for the electrician to actually come and install those. So the total cost of remodeling the pond was an additional $5,795. So if you add phase one and phase two together, the total cost of the pond was $11,495. That doesn't include the cost of the fish. I imagine if you guys wanted to build something like this, you would also want to put some awesome fish in here, whether they be koi, arowana, or big monster fish. Regardless, fish are gonna cost you just to give you an idea, all my koi fish cost me $1,500. That brings the new total for the entire pond and all of the inhabitants in it to $12,995, essentially 
thousand dollars. I want to acknowledge I did get a lot of freebies, discounts. Realistically, a build like this would probably cost me between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. Now, again, I'm doing all this. I'm saying all this. It's not to flex. It's really to show my appreciation and say how amazing it is that you have helped me achieve this. Something which is a hobby that has kind of turned into my career. Just want to express how grateful I am. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. George.